car can see. So you see some pedestrians here to the side. You'll notice some of the other cars. The green area is where the car knows it's a clear space for it to drive. Right now we are in manual mode, so Anthony is going to drive this vehicle around. But once you get out onto the street, we'll be in autonomous mode all the way back in. Um, mm -hmm. With our technology, um, everything you'll see will be completely with the car by itself. We do need by a state law to have a safety driver in the vehicle, which is what Anthony is doing. His hand will be on this little button here, which says auto. And that's the button that controls whether the car is in automatic or manual mode. So the moment all he needs to put the car in automatic mode is to just press the little button. So uh, we're not showing um, all of the sensors here. There's a lot of data the car is looking at, but we're showing you a subset. So you do see some of the vehicles it's picking up. You'll see this vehicle ahead of us that it's picking up and uh, some of the other information from sensors here. So still in manual mode, we're gonna pull out here and go automatic. part here overall is this combination of, oh, by the way we are autonomous, autonomous right now, you see this little auto written here that indicates that the car is driving autonomously. So it's looking at traffic lights, you see that information displayed here. Um, it's able to recognize the traffic light state and figure out what's exactly going on. You see the pedestrian crosswalks are indicated by green, which means that there's no pedestrian currently there. But once there's a pedestrian, the car would actually slow down for them and actually uh, wait for it. It does read uh, some of the signs as we go along the route. I'll point out some of the signs that it is also recognizing. That's coming from the vision system here. We have not programmed this route, so the car is not following a set trajectory here. All we programmed is a waypoint or a checkpoint at the Intel building and another one at the end of our route that I'll point out. And the car knows, okay, based on that, I need to get there, and then I need to get back. So the actual trajectory, the blue line the car is trying to follow, that's just calculated based on where we need to go. So it's not a pre-programmed route yet. So would that change depending on, say, traffic volume or things like that dynamically? Or? That's a good point. We could have that information integrated. We currently don't use that. But that would be pretty simple for us yep. to change that. Uh, we also work with the county of Santa Clara to um, instrument some lights with DSRC technology, that's discrete short-range communication, and that is broadcasting to the car the information about the light. So as you're sitting here as a human, you have no idea what's going on at that light, right? But the car is able to see that light. You see this little traffic yeah. sign, you'll see the halo on it. So it knows what's exactly going on at that light, even without vision. So that's something which is a really nice technology, which lets us basically have better vision than a normal human. How many uh, DSRC-enabled lights do they have in the area here? Uh, these are actually uh, something we work closely with the county to enable. There's a few lights we have turned on along the route. Yeah, just, just in this Yeah, so this was right a pilot here. program with the county of Santa Clara. So you again can see all the cars it's picking up. You see some of the information from other sensors, such as LiDAR here also displayed, which is looking um, to the side as well. Uh, the green region, as you can see, got changed based on the car ahead of you. So since there is a car there, there is clearly regions where you can't drive anymore. So it's adapting that based on, on the, uh, the driving. We were trying to get you guys during the middle of the day because as you'll see, the, the traffic backs up and then <laughs> okay. we'll be doing a lot of sitting. We want you to experience the actual right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. You'll see also that we're picking up opposing side traffic here. You see those cars. Yep. And you're picking up also the orientation of those vehicles. Make sure one isn't headed right at you or something. Exactly, exactly. That is very useful information for us to know how the traffic around us is progressing. So a lot of companies use information just about the fact that there's a car there. But this orientation information is very important. So we can actually see, is that car heading towards us or not, right? So we actually have the orientation, including the side. So as you'll see some traffic go by the side, that we'll be able to pick that up. So all of this technology uh, I mentioned with all the 26 sensors is being integrated. Um, it's being run on, on computers in the back, which are doing all of the processing and displaying it here to the car. All right, so we have the green, as you see, it's being picked up here. Uh, we also are using vision here to check, but really this, this radio is able to pick it up. We'll go across the intersection and at some point, a little bit down the line here, we'll change lanes. The car knows it needs to change lanes because we need to do a right turn later. So you see the indicator, it's speed limit is being picked up here. 
and the car is going to look for a clean, safe space. It's audio set, changing lens, and you see we just change lens here on our own. This road's a little bit bumpy, as you'll see. It feels a little bit sporty for that reason. And um, what we wanted to do is have you experience um, how the car confidently is able to traverse this pathway rather than being you know super cautious and being really slow in making decisions so that's a key part of the technology that we are able to integrate this all together the sensors into a nice driving experience in an urban environment we did show off a pretty complicated route at ces this year as well which included a highway merge and um, exit scenario as well so we'll be taking a right turn here so the car knows it needs to go in here because of the waypoint and i'll point that out on the map here Looking at all the crosswalks, we haven't encountered a pedestrian yet, otherwise you'll see the car stopping for it. Um, this is an interesting road here without any lane markers. So something which uh, if you were just using lane markers, you would have trouble with. But our technology, again, because of all the combination of sensors and information we use, we were able to traverse this. Here. So this was one of the waypoints here in the map that just showed up. So this was the waypoint and the other one is at in town. So the car just knows to come here and then head back there. take a right turn again to head back to Intel. Again, picking up the lights. So this is with vision. Our vision system is picking up the lights. I'm going to take this turn. We do have one additional light with PSRC that I'll point out um, again as well. So as, uh, yeah, as I was mentioning, uh, in, in CES we did a, a fairly complex route and um, there we had with the highway merging scenarios, you could see a lot of vehicles trying to cut into the vehicle's path. So at any point as it's driving, it is looking at its surrounding, looking at all the vehicles around to understand what could be the threats to the car, if anybody's gonna come in our path, if somebody's gonna come right next to us, uh, any kind of cut-in, that's something which the car is constantly analyzing and making decisions based on. Does any of what we're experiencing here in the uh, in this one autonomous mode require cloud communications or is this all self-contained at this point? Uh, in, down the line we do want to enable uh, some of this processing on the cloud but right now everything is happening on the vehicle. Yeah. So everything that you see is actually, um, if we did not have a cloud connection there wouldn't be any difference. Back green again, we'll go forward. You see a speed limit sign, 45, that the car picked up there. you'll notice um, the longer you sit in this car is um, you stop noticing that this is an autonomous vehicle and it's as if Anthony was driving it but as you can see from the video here from Anthony's hands he's clearly not doing that and that's what our goal is is to make this driving experience and the technology so seamless and so uh, you know natural that you don't feel that difference right it doesn't feel like a robotic car which is driving in a very monotonous manner we want it to be like a drive which a human would do. So this flight again we have DSRCs. Um, if you look to the right here, um, that vertical long pole, if you look about halfway on there, there is a little Wi-Fi router type of thing that you see. Um, that's actually the DSRC radio which is communicating to the car the information about the lights. picked a pretty hot day today, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't pick it. Intel did. <laughs> Intel did, that's right. <laughs> we have the AC up here full full blast, but just really hot. You know, one of the things that surprises me is it, you know, it accelerates the way a real driver would from a start. It doesn't kind of go too easily and gently. That's right. It's like, that's right. you're taking off. Uh -huh. you know? Yes, that's right. And I can um, tell you this, we really like this car, it's a supercharged car, you know, an SQ5. So um, if you're falling around as a human, probably in the back, you'll, you'll feel it much more. Yeah. And you'll have to really floor it in order to uh -huh. catch up with the car. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. 
as I mentioned for us, we do want to, like, with our uh, algorithms for how we drive, for how we see the threats around us, we have reached that level of sophistication where we feel comfortable doing that, right? We don't need to be driving really slow because we're really worried about what's going on. And, and especially, uh, as I mentioned, in a highly merged situation, when you have vehicles cutting into you at all speeds from both sides, you need to have that level of sophistication yeah. in order to drive there. You need to be somewhat aggressive. Does, right. it, uh, does it drive on the freeway yet? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, okay. this can drive on the freeway. We've, um, uh, as I mentioned at CES, we did a big, you know, six mile loop with the freeway section, a whole, uh, you know, ramp. So you see the car that came in front of us. The car knew about it and it actually slowed down a little bit to let that go. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to turn right here back towards the Intel campus. So that's the other thing, it knew that this is coming up, so it was just like a normal boat, human road, right? We actually slow down for it. So you'll notice at your point here, again, it knows there's some distance before it has to make that turn. So it may try to speed up a little bit, right? It's not going along with it, so yeah. Everything has been auto mode since we left here. We're gonna take this left and also in autonomous mode. There's a checkpoint it knows it needs to get back to. So it, turning here into this alleyway, this driveway, and here's this checkpoint on the map which it needed to hit. So we've hit that now, so Anthony will take over in manual mode and start driving again, take you guys back.